Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to the Global Finance World Safest Banks 2014 press conference and webcast. I am Andrea Fiano, the editor of the magazine, and with me is Denise Bedell, the managing editor of the magazine. We will present the results of our World Safest Banks 2014 with uh, a lot of new rankings. This year we will have the uh, traditional 50 safest banks and also 50, uh, 50 safest banks globally and safest banks on a regional basis. We will also have for the first time the world's safest 50 commercial banks. For the first time also the world's safest banks in more than 100 countries. And again, the top 50 safest banks in emerging markets and the safest banks in emerging markets as uh, seen by region. And last but not least, the safest Islamic financial institution in the Gulf. To explain the methodology of these rankings, here is Denise Bedell. When we put together our list of the top 50 safest banks in the world, we start out by taking the world's 500 largest banks. From there, we look at ratings from Fitch, Moody's, and S&P, and we look at the long-term foreign currency ratings for those 500 banks. From there, we create a score based on ratings and assets, and we primarily look at holding company ratings where possible, and we exclude all wholly owned banks. And now, uh, I have a few housekeeping items before we get onto the list. We will be incorporating all of our safest lists, including the expanded safest commercial banks and our new country rankings into our safest banks issue in the November issue. Uh, in the interest of time today, we'll highlight the top 15 names for the uh, safest banks list and for the safest commercial list. And at the end of the conference, or later on today, we will send out an email to all participants uh, with links to the full lists. There will be time for questions at the end of the press conference. And you can ask questions by typing them into the question drop-down in the GoToWebinar control panel to your right. If you'd like a copy of the presentation, please feel free to drop us an email. The contact details will be in our final slide. And if you have any additional questions as well, please feel free to, to drop us an email. We do have a polling question. We would appreciate it if you took a moment to respond to that. And now, without further ado, I'll pass you back to Andrea to reveal our top 50 safest banks in the world. And here we go. These are the top 10. The top ranked bank are uh, many same, many names we've seen before. The safest one is KFW from Germany, followed by the Zucker Cantonal Bank of Switzerland, and then two more German banks. Lands Wirtschaftliche Rentenbank and the L Bank, and then two Dutch bank, Bank Netherlands and Gementin, and Netherlands Waterschaps Bank. Uh, as you can see, the top 10 are all European banks. Uh, there are some changes at the top, but they, these are uh, banks located in countries that still have the AAA ratings. Not all of them, but the top ranked ones. Now we'll see some more from 10 to 15, I guess. And this is, this we can see, we have a Canadian bank, TB Bank Group, we'll talk about it later as well. And then three banks from Singapore, 12, 13, and 14. Rabobank Bank of Netherlands is number 15. We proceed now to look at the uh, fact that in the top 50 there are five new names uh, and five banks that are not in the top 50. That doesn't mean that they're not ranked, they just some of them have been uh, downgraded or have had some other changes. Northern Trust, Bank of Taiwan, Banco de Chile, Bank of Tokyo, Tokyo Mitsubishi and LGT are not in the top 50 this year. On the other hand, we have a few new names. Société de Financement Local, a French bank, which is a relatively new bank, was not ranked last year. HSBC France is in. It is uh, traditionally we don't list banks that are 100% owned by another bank, but in this case, it is not 100%, it's 99 point something. Then we have a Swiss bank, Banque Cantonal Badoise, and then two export import banks, the Export Import Bank of China and Export Import Bank of Korea. Five changes in the top 50. And now we'll move on to the safest banks by region. 
The safest banks in North America, leading the ranking, are six Canadian banks. We start with TD Bank Group, Royal Bank of Canada, Bank of Nova Scotia, Caisse Centrale des Jardins, and Bank of Montreal, and CIBC. These are followed by a trio of U.S. agricultural banks, CoBank, AgriBank, and AgFirst, followed by two of the, the big U.S. players, BNY Mellon and U.S. Bancorp. In Western Europe, the safest banks are pretty much the same. They were the safest worldwide. We see again KEFW, Zurich Cantonal Bank, and at pretty much the same ranking we just saw for the 50 safest. Moving on to Central and Eastern Europe, we begin with Czeska Sportelna, Komerkny Bank, both of the Czech Republic. Then we move on to five Polish banks, Pekao Bank Polski, Bank Pekao, ING Bank Szlaszki, M Bank, and Bank Sokodny WBK. From there, we continue with three Russian banks Spurbank, Nesh Ekonom Bank, and VTB Bank. In Latin America, the top four banks are once again Chilean banks Banco Estado, Banco de Chile, Banco Santander Chile, Banco de Credito e Inversiones. They are followed by two Mexican banks. There are four Mexican banks in the top ten. We have HSBC Mexico, Banobras, there are two Peruvian banks, Banco de Credito BCP, then Banco Santander Mexico, BBVA Continental from Peru, and then Scotia Bank, Scotia Bank in Berlin in Mexico. In Asia, we begin the list with three Singaporean banks, DBS, Overseas Chinese Banking Corp, and United Overseas Bank. This is followed by Hang Seng of Hong Kong and three Chinese banks, China Development Bank, Agricultural Development Bank of China and the Exim Bank. And finally, we're, this is followed by four South Korean banks, Korea Finance Corp, Industrial Bank of Korea, and the Exim Bank. Exim. In the Middle East, we have 11 banks in the top rank, and they will be also the same banks for the safest in the emerging markets. National Bank of Abu Dhabi is number one, followed by NBK, National Bank of Kuwait, and then Qatar National Bank, four Saudi banks, Samba, Financial Group, National Commercial Bank, Araigi, and Riyadh Bank. Follow again by another Bank of United Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank, two Saudi banks, SABB, Bank Saudi Francie, and Union National Banks. We have more than 10 because in this case there are several banks with the same score. More details will actually be provided in the November issue of the magazine with all the rankings. In Australia and New Zealand, the list is completely dominated by Australian banks, but that is primarily due to the assets of uh, banks from New Zealand, which um, excludes them from the, the top 500 list. Uh, so leading the pack, we have National Australia Bank, followed by Commonwealth Bank of Australia, ANZ, or ANZ, Westpac, Suncorp Medway, Bendigo and Adelaide, Bank of Queensland, and Macquarie. And now we move on to the safest commercial banks. The methodology is quite similar to that of the top 50 safest banks. Uh, one big change, however, is that we exclude any banks that are more than 50% government owned. And that's how we come up with the, the ranking. And here are the names. TD Bank from Canada is the safest commercial bank in the world, and this is a first. Last year there was another winner. The Canadian bank is followed by three banks from Singapore, which we already see in, at the top safest 50. Here they are, number two, three, four. DBS, Overseas Chinese Banking, United Overseas Banks. Rabobank is number five. It was the safest commercial bank last year. There was a downgrade. And then another Canadian bank, Royal Bank of Canada, and for the top 10, four Australian banks. We just named them a second ago, National Australia Bank, Commonwealth Bank of Australia, ANC Group, and Westpac. Follow from 11 to 15 by two Swedish banks. Nordia is 11th, Bank of Nova Scotia of Canada number 12, Svensk Aldens Bank and number 13, Hang Seng Bank from Hong Kong is number 14, and another Canadian bank is number 15, Caisse Centrale Desjardins. 
And now we'll move on to the safest emerging markets banks. As opposed to the top 50 in the world, the, the primary difference between the, the methodology for this list and our top 50 safest banks is that we take uh, the universe of 500 largest emerging market banks. And from there, we again get ratings from Fitch, Moody's, and S&P. We look at their long-term foreign currency ratings, create a score by ratings and assets. And we, look at wholly, we exclude wholly owned banks, and we primarily look at holding company ratings. The safest banks in the emerging markets are this year. Number one, National Bank of Abu Dhabi, followed by three Chinese banks, China Development Bank, Agricultural Development Bank of China, Export Import Bank of China. Three Korean, South Korean banks are following, Korea Finance Corporation, Industrial Bank of Korea, Korean Development Bank. MBK, the National Bank of Kuwait, is number eight, followed by the Export Import Bank of Korea, number nine, and then the Latin American Banking, Banco Estado Chile, number 10. In the other five, from 10 to 15, we have uh, three banks from the Middle East. Qatar National Bank is number 11. Samba from Saudi Arabia is number 12. Number 13 is Bank of Taiwan. Another Chilean bank, Banco de Chile, number 14. And then number 15, National Commercial Bank of Saudi Arabia. And now we move on to the safest emerging banks by region. In Asia, the list is dominated by Chinese banks. We start with China Development Bank, Agricultural Development Bank of China, and the Exim Bank of China. This is followed by four South Korean banks, Korea Finance Corp, Industrial Bank of Korea, Korea Development Bank, and the Exim Bank. Then we have a Bank of Taiwan, and again, four more Chinese banks, ICBC, CCB, Agricultural Bank of China, and Bank of China. And finally, the list is, uh, continues with three South Korean banks, Kukmin, Shinhan, and Nongkyuk. For the safest emerging markets banks in the Middle East, we have National Bank of Abu Dhabi, followed by the NBK, National Bank of Kuwait, and then Qatar National Bank, four Saudi Bank, Samba Financial Group, National Commercial Bank, Araigi, and Riyadh Bank, and then Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank, SAVB, Bank Saudi Francie, and Union National Bank. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the list is dominated by South African banks. Their Standard Bank of South Africa leads the list, followed by First Rand, then Nedbank, and Investec. And now we move on to safest banks by country, our new listing. The methodology is somewhat different for our safest banks by country, which as we mentioned is a brand new list for us. Uh, to create the, the universe of uh, banks, we look at the world's 1,000 largest banks. We again take ratings from Fitch, Moody's, and S&P, long-term foreign currency ratings, and we create a score based on ratings and assets. We use holding company ratings where possible, and wholly owed banks are excluded. The sovereign rating of a country acts as an effective ceiling. Uh, and where banks have the same rating, they are scored by assets. Here are the safest by country. Some of these countries have been already mentioned. The safest in Canada is TD Bank. In the United States, the safest bank is CoBank, one of the agricultural banks. But we have many countries that have not been mentioned before. Here is the list, Andorra, Austria, Belgium, Cyprus, Denmark, Finland, over a hundred names. There are some banks that make some of the rankings we mentioned before, but not all of them. And so here, there, this is a big new development for us. We see here Central and Eastern Europe. Many of these countries have not been mentioned before in the safest ranking. Albania, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, Bulgaria, and and many other countries that will be uh, mentioned here for a total, as we said, of over 100. The uh, new countries are also in uh, South America, many names that have not appeared before in the safest, so it's a new development for us. And then some, I would say, also some new names in countries that are represented. Here's South America, Asia, of course we can you will be able to see all this in detail further on, but just for the sake of the presentation, we'll just go over this list relatively quickly. Many new Asian countries, 
we try to have as many possible countries represented, Middle East, Africa, and not a lot of countries that were not presented before. And uh, again, this is a major effort from our on our end. Pretty much all the countries that have rated banks, independent banks present in their territory are represented in this list. And here, even uh, in Australia New Zealand, we see that Kiwi makes the list as the safest in New Zealand, is not one of the largest 500 in the world, therefore does not make, even though it has a very high rating, does not make the top safest 50. Now we'll move on to the safest Islamic banks in the GCC, our final listing for today. The, uh, the banks that we're listing here are all the Islamic banks in the Gulf that have three ratings from the three big rating agencies. Therefore, they have Fitch, Moody's and S&P. We are comparing again, like in the other rankings, we have long-term foreign currency ratings. The banks are scored by ratings and assets. When there is a tie, the larger bank usually we, we, we have it ranked higher. And we have done this for the first time in February of this year, but there are some new names in the rankings. In first place, we have Al Raiji of Saudi Arabia, followed by Al Halal of the UAE. Kuwait Finance House tops the list for Kuwait, followed by Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank of the UAE. We have two Qatari names um, in fifth and sixth place, Qatar Islamic Bank and Qatar International Islamic Bank. This is followed by Bubian in Kuwait, which is an, a new name to the list. Dubai Islamic Bank of the UAE, Bank Al Jazeera of Saudi Arabia, and Sharia Islamic Bank of the UAE. And that concludes the presentation part of today's press conference. And now we would like to open the door to some questions from the audience. So if you have questions, as I mentioned at the beginning, please feel free to post them in the question section of the GoToWebinar control panel to your right. And our first question is, why do you include government-owned banks? Well, I would say as we measure the safety of these banks, the government ownership is actually an added element of security in most cases. We should say that in, uh, uh, the, in many countries, the sovereign rating of the country represents some kind of a ceiling. No single bank in one given country will have a rating higher than the country where they reside and operate. So government-owned banks, are usually even safer than the other banks. That's why we include them in the general ranking, but we have decided to expand our ranking of commercial banks so to make a distinction between banks that are government-owned and banks that are not government-owned, or at least not for more than 50%. Okay. Um, our next question is, um, have you changed the ranking at all since the crisis? And if so, how? We have kept the same methodology over the years. This year we expanded, and as Denise explained, we uh, used the largest 500 banks for all of these rankings. The largest 500 is measured by their assets, uh, with the exception of the new rank safest banks in each country, which are based on the largest 1,000 banks in the world. So our methodology has not changed. Let's not forget the ratings are changed all the time. The ratings that we have just presented are uh, up to August 14th, and therefore it's not a change in methodology that makes the difference. It is the change in the ratings themselves that make the difference. Uh, another question. It looks like you give sust substantial weight to the asset size of the bank when rating its safety. Do you think the largest banks are always the safest? No, we don't think that they are always the safest, but we do think that the largest banks, um, well, first of all, there are studies, and, and in, the, in that respect, if you're interested, um, Andrew Cunningham, who is the analyst who has developed uh, these rankings this year, explains that there are studies that prove that larger banks are usually safer than banks of smaller, smaller in terms of assets. But in general, we think that uh, it is a plus, the assets represent an even added element 
Again, it's not just the assets, it's the ratings and the assets that we take into consideration. I would add that when we put together the, the universe of banks, we look at the asset size as a, a first indicator, but then we move on to create a score based on, on um, ratings. So it's a, a dual, um, dual mechanism in order to create the, uh, the final list. Thank you.